We are proud to announce that our channel is one of many who joined the Project Ukraine hosted by kings and generals, a playlist of videos shining a light on the rich history of the Ukrainian land and people, dispelling the myths shared by propaganda. Your likes and shares will help over 10 million displaced Ukrainians and with feeding, medicating and evacuating the most vulnerable people from the city of Kiev. The collapse of the Western Roman Empire has, since the very emergence of modern historiography, been viewed as a rapid and violent period of decay. The central role in the ruin of the Western provinces of the empire has often been attributed to the so-called barbarians, or people living beyond the Rhine and Danube frontiers. The view of a violent and bloody takeover of the empire by unorganized mobs of technologically and culturally inferior tribes has since gotten under a lot of deserved scrutiny. This oversimplified narrative was especially prevalent in the latter half of the 20th century, particularly in the Romance-speaking countries of Europe. In the 1970s, the brilliant historian Peter Brown published The World of Late Antiquity, a monograph that established the period between 200 and 600 AD as a distinct historical era. In his work, Brown presented a period that was typically associated with the fall of the Roman Empire as one of gradual transition and cultural and religious evolution which spanned centuries. Since the 1970s and onwards, the fall of Rome and the role of the barbarians in it has been somewhat of a debatable topic. Looking into the events of the 5th century as an intentional and planned Germanic takeover is far from the truth. In recent years, many historians have contributed to the downfall of this reductionist view on the Great Migrations, with some going as far as to entirely deny the idea of any invasion taking place. According to the proponents of this view, a lot of the occupied land was formally ceded to the barbarians because of the widely practiced 5th century Roman policy of conscripting foreign tribes into the Roman army in return for settlement rights. So, what happens in the 400s? Were the 5th century migrations of violent Germanic land grab, or was it entirely a result of Rome's failed attempt of integrating these peoples who simply wish to benefit from the prosperity of the empire by becoming a part of it. Ever since the earliest encounter between Germanic tribes and Roman legions, the former became renowned for their effectiveness. As acknowledged by many contemporary historians, such as Tacitus, it was only the vast disunity between these tribes that kept them from becoming a serious problem for the empire. Throughout history, Rome exploited Germanic disunity, paying one Germanic group to fend off another. This eventually led to a growing connection between the Germanic and Roman worlds. In the following centuries, Roman military technology and way of life found their way into Germania. The groups of the region began adopting a more centralized method of political organization, coalescing into growing tribal confederations. This process was exacerbated by the arrival of Hunnic tribes that threatened both Germans and Romans alike. During this same period, the Chernihov culture thrived across Eastern Europe, centered mostly on what is today Kiev, Ukraine. But with the Hunnic invasion, the Chernihov culture declined rapidly. Fast forward to 2022, and the fog of war has engulfed Ukraine. But the sponsor of this video, Ground News, cuts through the bias as the world's first news comparison platform. Their website and app shows you a visual breakdown of the news sources covering a story and lets you see where they fall on the political spectrum. You can easily swipe between headlines to discover how the same story is covered by left, center, and right-leaning sources. Another cool feature is that you can see which stories are being deliberately underreported by the left or the right, and they have global coverage. You can watch how international stories are being covered across the globe using the interactive map. 
Give Ground News a try by visiting our link in the description to download the free app. In every respect, they provide you with a better way to access news about current events. Stay informed with Ground News. In the 370s, because of the pressure of the Hunnic migrations, a large group of Germanic Goths were allowed to settle in the Roman province of Moesia by Emperor Valens. Due to extremely poor treatment from the Romans, the Goths eventually rebelled and marched against the Emperor. This led to one of the worst military disasters in Roman history at Adrianople in 378 AD, where a Roman army and Emperor Valens perished. In the 380s and 90s, Emperor Theodosius employed a large group of these tribes to serve in his armies during his wars with the usurpers Magnus Maximus and Eugenius. It is these actions undertaken by Theodosius and Valens that set the practice of granting Roman land to foreign tribes in return for military service. Unlike in the past, barbarian conscripts were allowed to serve under their own tribal leaders these foreign mercenaries, or federati as they were called by the Romans, were called upon in dire need, following the bloody civil wars led by Theodosius that severely drained Roman manpower. This process was amplified in the 5th century, with the rapid decline of the Western Roman taxation system. It has been often argued by some historians that most of the settled land within the Roman Empire was formally ceded to the barbarians, a view that seems to be problematic according to many historians from the opposite camp. As implied by historian Brian Ward Perkins in his book The Fall of Rome and the End of a Civilization, the idea of peaceful Germanic settlement is mostly wrong, as an extensive array of sources and documents prove otherwise. Perkins uses the treaty between the Visigoths and Romans in 419 as a notable example. Originally granted a small area in Gascony, the Visigoths rapidly expanded the size of their holdings through the use of force, eventually coming to rule over most of the Iberian Peninsula and southern Gaul by the 460s. Another proof of the destruction caused by the barbarians is the vast tax relief that the Roman government granted to the population of Italy following the invasion and subsequent sack of Rome by the Goths in 410. The damage inflicted on Italia was so large that its populace was allowed to pay a mere one-fifth in taxes of what they used to pay. The idea of the violent barbarian conquest of Roman territory can be backed by some works of contemporary Roman chroniclers. In his description of the life of Saint Severinus of Noricum, the disciple of the Saint Eugippius describes the struggle between the Roman population in the northern province of Noricum on one side and the Germanic tribes of the Rugi and Alemanni on the other. Eugippius acknowledges the brutality with which the barbarians sacked some of the last standing Roman cities, many of which were governing themselves completely independently as Roman control over many regions had completely waned off by the 450s. Sources from the Iberian Peninsula also describe a vivid horror among the local populations from the actions of the invaders. Many locals attempted to resist the invaders, especially the populations in the least Romanized areas, where the existing pre-Roman tribal system made the pushback against the barbarians more effective. Such were, for example, the so-called Bagaudi, originally peasant insurgents in the Roman Empire. Following the barbarian settlement of Gaul and Hispania, these groups effectively resisted their new Germanic masters for decades. Another notable example of strong local resistance against the incoming invaders can be found in Britannia. After the abandonment of the province by Emperor Honorius in the early 5th century, the island of Britain was assailed by the Germanic tribes of the Angles and Saxons. The Germanic invaders there were met with fierce resistance from the local Romano-Celtic populations. It is why sometimes Wales is regarded as the last part of the Roman Empire to fall to the Germanic invaders, being fully subdued by the English only during the 13th century. 
The crossing of Gibraltar and later invasion of the Roman province of Africa by the Vandal tribes is often described by contemporary sources as being exceptionally brutal. Most prominently in the account of Victor of Vita, who wrote, no sex or rage was spared, not even God's ministers, about the Vandal treatment of the locals and the clergy. After establishing a kingdom in the Maghreb, the Vandals became renowned for their piracy in the Mediterranean, which later led to the conquest of Sardinia, Corsica, and Sicily, culminating with the Vandal sack of Rome in 455. With all that said, the thesis that barbarian settlement had its peaceful sides shouldn't be entirely disregarded. Sources from this period are notorious for their exaggeration. Furthermore, the bias of the Roman Christian authors towards the Aryan Christian and pagan Germanic tribes should be taken into account. Even sources such as the one of Eugippius mentioned previously describe many situations in which problems between Germanic invaders and local populations were resolved through peaceful negotiations. Another point worth mentioning is the fact that the barbarian groups who settled in Roman territory did not have any conscious aim of destroying the Roman Empire. Most of these tribes were extremely distinct from each other, often fighting Romans and their kinsmen with equal ferocity. The sole motive of most of the Germanic settlers was likely to benefit from the wealth of the empire by becoming a part of it. It is partially the backlash of the Roman ruling apparatus and its evident disdain towards some of those groups that led to widespread violence on some occasions. A notorious example of Roman brutality is what happened following the assassination of the half-Germanic general, Stilicho. After sentencing the extremely competent half-Vandal general to death, Emperor Honorius caused the slaughter of the families of nearly all Germanic soldiers serving in the Roman army in Italy. It is this act of exceptional violence that prompted many Germanic federati to join Alaric the Goth during his campaign in Italy and the following sack of Rome in 410. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476, many of the Germanic kingdoms formed in the place of Rome saw themselves as a continuation of the empire, with some of them even owing allegiance to the emperors of the Eastern Roman Empire. The predominantly Roman population enjoyed a relatively tolerant treatment from their new Germanic masters, once the times of war were over. The culture and legacy of the Western Roman Empire did not disappear overnight, but instead continued to thrive while blending with Germanic tradition until the two were united into one identity. Life in many of the post-Roman Germanic kingdoms proved to be a lot more peaceful than the one during the late Western Roman Empire. If you stayed around this far, thank you for watching. Be sure to click the red button to subscribe, leave a like and comment as a sacrifice to the gods of the algorithm. Big thanks to our patrons for their amazing support. If you'd like to see our videos ad-free and early access, head over to our Patreon page. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.